Hi everyone. In this video we'll introduce the idea of simple data tables for the treatment of statistical data. To do this we'll present an example. We'll consider a statistical variable, the marks obtained by a class of 20 students when given a multiple choice exam consisting of 10 questions. On the screen you can see what the students marks were. A simple data table is one in which the various data are collected along with the frequency with which they occur and possibly other values corresponding to the statistical variable being considered. In a simple data table the first column contains the various data x sub i. In our case the column indicates the marks obtained 0, 1, 2 doesn't appear so we don't put it in then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In the second column are the absolute frequencies, f sub i, corresponding to the data in the first column. The frequency f sub i of a datum x sub i is the number of times that the datum appears. In our case, the absolute frequencies f sub i given in the second column are as follows. For data 0, because it appears one time, its absolute frequency is 1. For data 1, again it appears 1, so its absolute frequency is 1. Data 3 appears 2 times, so its absolute frequency is 2. Data 4 appears 2 times, so its absolute frequency is 2. Data 5 appears 3 times, so its absolute frequency is 3. Data 6 appears 3 times, so its absolute frequency is 3. Data 7 appears 4 times, so its absolute frequency is 4. Data 8 appears 1 time, so its absolute frequency is 1. Data 9 appears 2 times, so its absolute frequency is 2. And finally, data 10 appears once, so its absolute frequency is 1. At the end of this column we show the sum of all the absolute frequencies which is denoted by this symbol, which we read as the sum of f sub i. So we'll put the sum of the f sub i values and this will always be the total number of data which we'll denote by n. In our case if we add up all the items in this column we get the total number of data n which is 20. In addition to these two columns we can also add two others. We can include a column with the accumulated absolute frequencies capital F sub i. The cumulative absolute frequency capital F sub i of a data set x sub i is its absolute frequency f sub i plus the sum of the absolute frequencies of the data sets less than this. Let's then add a column with the absolute frequencies capital F sub i. We have that the accumulated absolute frequency of data 0 is the sum of its absolute frequency plus the sum of the absolute frequencies of the data that are above 0. Well, there are no data above it, so this is just the absolute frequency of 0, which is 1. Next, the cumulative absolute frequency of 1 is its absolute frequency, which is 1, plus the absolute frequency of the data above it. We only have the datum 0, whose absolute frequency is 1, so the cumulative absolute frequency of 1 is 1 plus 1, which is 2. The cumulative absolute frequency of 3 is the absolute frequency 2, plus the sum of the absolute frequencies of the data above it, 2 plus 1, plus 1, which is 4. The cumulative absolute frequency of 4 is its absolute frequency, which is 2, plus the sum of the absolute frequencies of the data above it, so that we have to add these elements. But notice that the result of adding these values is the accumulative absolute frequency of data 3, which we've placed on the right side. So directly, to calculate the accumulated absolute frequency of a datum, we can add its absolute frequency plus the accumulated absolute frequency of the previous datum. 
in our case 2 plus 4 which is 6. Continuing in the same way the cumulative absolute frequency of 5 is 3 plus 6 which is 9. The cumulative absolute frequency of 6 is 3 plus 9 which is 12. The cumulated absolute frequency of 7 is 4 plus 12 which is 16. The cumulative absolute frequency of 8 is 1 plus 16 which is 17. The cumulative absolute frequency of 9 is 2 plus 17 which is 19. Finally the cumulative absolute frequency of 10 is 1 plus 19 which is 20. The last cumulative absolute frequency always coincides with the data number n which in our case is 20. Finally, we can also include a column with the relative frequencies h sub i of each of the data. The relative frequency h sub i of a datum x sub i is its absolute frequency divided by the total number of data n. In our example, the relative frequency of datum 0, its absolute frequency divided by the total number of data n, is 1 divided by 20, which is 0 0.05. The relative frequency of 1 is 1 divided by 20, which is 0 0.05. The relative frequency of 3 is 2 divided by 20, which is 0 0.1. The relative frequency of 4 is 2 divided by 20, which is 0 0.1. The relative frequency of 5 is 3 divided by 20, which is 0 0.15. The relative frequency of 6 is 3 divided by 20, which is 0 0.15. The relative frequency of 7 is 4 divided by 20, which is 0 0.2. The relative frequency of 8 is 1 divided by 20, which is 0 0.05. The relative frequency of 9 is 2 divided by 20, which is 0 0.1. The relative frequency of 10 is 1 divided by 20, which is 0 0.05. And now something that can come in handy to detect errors that you may have made. The sum of all the relative frequencies h sub i should be 1. Otherwise you'll have to review your calculations to see where you've made a mistake. In our case if we add all the relative frequencies we get 1, so that's good. And that wraps up this video on simple data tables. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.